speakers was Rob, and uh, <laughs> Rob gave his personal testimony. You're going to hear a little bit of that today, but um, the testimony just uh, ordained by God, and it's a story of restoration and beauty and in the eyes of God, but, but it's just a wonderful thing, and the ministry that we actually heard there, uh, Rob was uh, one of the architects of that particular morning. The ministry is called Jumpstart. Uh, and it got launched in uh, South Carolina in 2008. And this was conceived while Rob and three other men were incarcerated back in about 2003. They sat down and decided they really wanted to put together a program that would be transformational for men on the, and women on the inside. And that's what they conceived as they got together and prayed about it. They prayed hard about it. Three of those men were in for life sentences, and one was in for a 30-year sentence. As of today, all of those men are on the outside serving in Christian ministry. Amen. That's how our God works. Amen. Amen. This Jumpstart program, I just want to give you just a two-second uh, summary of it in terms of what God started on the inside. It was launched in 2008. We're now in um, 18 of 21 prisons in South Carolina. And it was launched in Alabama, Georgia, and Ohio in the past three years. And last March, we launched it here in North Carolina. We're off. Here in North Carolina, we're down at Davidson Correctional Facility and Columbus Facility over in Whiteville. And uh, thousands of individuals have gone through this program over the last uh, year since 2008 in South Carolina and these other states. And thousands have graduated from the program, men and women. One of the wonderful statistics where you can see God's hand in what Rob and those three men started back in prison that day is that the recidivism rate of the graduates in that program who end up on the outside is 4%. 96% of the men and women who've gone through this program, graduated this 40-week intensive program on the inside of prisons, stay on the outside. Hallelujah. So you're gonna hear a little bit about the testimony and how God laid that on his heart and he's going to bring that to us today. He currently lives in Goldsboro, North Carolina with his wife, Ellen, who is here with us today. So he has a son and two beautiful stepdaughters uh, that, that he loves very much. And uh, he had also obtained a two-year seminary degree while he was incarcerated. And that's a wonderful thing because uh, you can see how that moved in Rob's life. So he's on the, the, the board of directors of Jumpstart here in North Carolina. Without further delay, I'd like to introduce Rob Whitmer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Uh, Wrong mic? Okay. Uh, Wrong tape. So I just grab one. <laughs> Amen. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everyone. Praise God for you being here. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. It's a privilege to be here standing here this morning. And I, in a couple of other women, I like to say this. It's something about a group of men that's after God. It's something about a group of men that's after God. Yeah. It joys my heart because I stood in rooms like this with men that wore khaki. And they had a stripe down the leg that said South Carolina Department of Corrections. And on the back, it had SEDC. But in that group of men, there were men that were hungry. They wanted to know what life was all about. They wanted to understand why did I do what I did and how can I not do it again? I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me back up. I have on today my favorite sweater. You like it? Man, this is, I mean, this is my favorite sweater. I don't wear it very often anymore, um, but this is my favorite sweater. Let me tell you why. It was late October, early November of 2015. And at the time I was living in Spartanburg, South Carolina, where the Jumpstart program is based, the outside portion of it. And I was driving down the road, Reedville Road. It was a Saturday morning, and it had been raining the night before. And so it was about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Me and the guy were on our way to pick up some equipment, or I think it may have been a Washington drive, somebody was donating the jump start, so we had the truck and the trailer, we were going to get it. And as we were driving down Reedville really Road, I saw something in the gutter. And it was like instantly I knew what it was. So I went over by the block, turned around, came back, and I told Chris, get out and get that for me. Guess what it was? <laughs> 
Now, let me put this disclaimer out here. I do not recommend stopping and picking up clothes <laughs> out of the gutter, okay? I don't recommend it. But this day, you know how you have a time where it's like, you got to do this? You don't necessarily understand why, even as my man just said about it, we don't know God's thoughts, we don't know his ways. I didn't understand necessarily what was behind all this, but I really felt a strong urging to get that sweater. Picked it up. Took it home, washed it several times. Got all the twigs and leaves out of it. Got it looking pretty good. Wore the church one Sunday. God said, man, Rob, I like that sweater, man. Where'd you get it? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't think it got any more on the rack for you, but anyway. <laughs> so I wore it, and I keep it as a reminder because God took my broken, discarded life. Yeah. Picked it up out of the gutter, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Washed me in his blood. Cleansed me. And filled me. And now he's wearing me. Because doesn't the scripture say, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world? Amen. Amen. So that is a lesson for me about how God is able to reach the old folks singing the song, reach way down. Jesus will pick you up. And that's what he's done for me. And in a nutshell, that's my testimony about he took a man that has squandered life's opportunities and said, I still got a purpose for you. I got a plan. And so that led, that was after my incarceration. And let me back up and give you some history about the incarceration. As I said, I had squandered many opportunities. I had no one to blame but myself. Some of you can identify with that. You recognize that life has presented you with some great opportunities that you didn't take advantage of. I did that. As a result of the choices that I made, the consequences were that I needed to go to South Carolina Department of Corrections. I was hard-headed. I was stubborn. I thought I knew what I wanted to do. I want to live life my own way without any laws. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm big and bad enough to do it. Judge Frank Epps, late Judge Frank Epps, sentenced me to a 20 year life sentence in the Department of Corrections. Mm. And he gave me this advice. He said, read a book a week, your Bible every night. Wow. Initially, the first two years, I didn't do that. I was angry because of the opportunities I had squandered, because of the pain I caused my family, because of others that I had hurt. But after two years, I began to read. Circumstances forced me to start looking for answers. And ultimately, I found them in the book Amen. of books. And so I began a relationship with the Lord. I won't go into the details of that. Maybe at some other time we'll talk about that. But in the interest of time, I'll just gloss over that. Began a relationship with the Lord, and I was hungry. I was so hungry that I was walking around the yard with my little red New Testament with notes in it. And I was like this. And I, I was walking into people, and I was running into stuff, and I was tripping off the sidewalk. And I was like, I, maybe I just need to go sit down somewhere. <laughs> so I was sitting down, me, but there, there was a hunger. Guys and ladies, there was a hunger that caused me to put, I wanted answers for life. Hmm. I wanted to know why did I do the things I did. I wanted to know why, how can I not do those things again? And furthermore, how can I help somebody else? And so me and a, a band of other brothers, we got together and we started asking these questions. We see guys get out this year, early part of the year. By late August, he was back and he was happy. Like, this is where he needed to be. And like, man, what happened? Why are you here? Well, we started hearing a common thing. Couldn't find a job. Housing situation. Baby, baby mama drama. That monkey kept calling me, and that monkey is addiction. All these different things were contributing to them making the, the same poor choices that they made before. So some brothers and I, we started with chapter Mark Browns, and we started doing some like discipleship on the inside, wanting to find out, okay, what, what, what can we do ourselves? And out of that, we ultimately came into contact with the Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, and that book was very popular at that time. And it gave a layout for us that we took and said, okay, we're not going to just read it for one day or for 40 days. We're going to take one chapter for 40 weeks. Because that gave us time to sit with it long enough for it to really impact our yes. thinking and our hearts. 
And as we did that, we saw, hey, you know what? This will be something good to use to disciple others and help them to learn to live after God's purpose and not the things that have been destroying their lives. So ultimately, long story short, Jumpstart was birthed out of that. And it's still going strong today. Now let me go down the side street for a minute. One of the lessons that I learned early on in my Christian walk with the Lord was about intimacy. As I said, I was really hungry and seeking the Lord. And so there was a period of time I can remember it was a January of 1997. I got saved in 96, but in January of 97, if some of you know about the Kairos prison ministry, mind you, yes, if you know. Okay. Anyway, the Kairos prison ministry had a four-day weekend, and I remember, those are some really special times, by the way. And I was remembering, I went back to my dorm, like on that Saturday night after um, doing different things in the chapel area with that. And so that Saturday night after the 9 o'clock roll call count, my cell partner left to go play cards or something, and I found myself went on my knees at my bunk. And I was praying. I was crying out to the Lord. And men and ladies, it was as if Jesus walked into that same Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It was a breathtaking. And so I shared that because 
That was the impetus behind our involvement with Jumpstart. Men had a relationship with God that caused them to think about everybody else and eternity. Amen. And so we wanted to reach out. And so that's where Jumpstart birthed from. And that's why I'm here today. And that's why Ed is here. And that's why Keith and that's why Leah is here today. Because they see the benefits of this program and what it's doing with people's lives that have been forgotten. This is not a beat down. I just want to let you know that there are some people whose names we do not know, whose faces we may have seen on the news last week, last year, last decade, that we forgot about, that God is dealing with. And if you know anything about valuables, we usually put them in a safe place. God values them. He values them dearly. They are precious in the sight. And so I'm grateful for every opportunity that you guys, for all you're doing to help the people in Turkey and, and whatever other ministries you're doing, but there's one more I want to make you aware of. Jumpstart, which stands for just using the master's plan, staying true at the release time. My second lesson that I want to share today, and there are many, I brought my keyboard with me. And I'll be brief. I grew up with a desire to want to play the keyboard because I like the sound of it. While in prison, you don't necessarily have very much access to instruments, unless you're already a musician. A good friend of mine, Big Side Punk, I see him, which lives over in Lexington County. He's got a hibachi restaurant over there with his wife and his daughter, Lucy. Let's go over there and see him sometime. Well, he worked in the chapel with me, and Ben said, man, Rob, the Lord teaching me to play piano. You know what that did for me? The Bible says in the book of Romans that God used the Gentiles to provoke the Jews to jealousy. I wasn't better then. I was better. I was like, man, I want to learn to play. I want to, you know, and I'm like this. And so it's like, we'll do something about it. I don't have a keyboard. Okay, this is what he showed me. I took two sheets of notebook paper, taped them together, drew out two octaves, maybe two and a half octaves on the keyboard, black and white keys and start learning what the scales were. Yeah. Since I worked in the chapel, whenever I went to the chapel, I started experimenting my ear what I was doing on paper. And I found out something just earth-shattering that every other note in the scale is a chord. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, Jesus. And so now I'm like, okay, now it's starting to work. And once I got my fingers and started going in the right direction, I learned how, okay, maybe this will work. Can I use this one? So, so, I learned how to pink, 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 you know, and, and I am not a concert pianist. If that's what you think I am, please, that's not going to happen. But I learned how to make a little racket so that I can worship because it's a form of worship for me. We love the worship. Amen. 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 So I'm just going to sing maybe one or two uh, original songs and I you know it fine and not just worship. Close your eyes and just bask in the glory of the Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Jesus' name.